Cast my mind to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds, his hands, his feet My Savior on that cursed tree Body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, a side of steel and all. Reply, for he was slain for us. 
Lord, forever thine. The whole creation join in one to bless the sacred name of him that sits upon the throne and to In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Welcome on the Sunday after Ascension Day. It's also the seventh Sunday of Easter. I hope you managed to watch our Ascension Day service. But if you missed it, you can watch it whenever you want on YouTube. It's always there for you. Today, in our reading from Ezekiel, we hear of God putting a new spirit within us by taking our hearts of stone and giving us hearts of flesh. It's easy for us to become hardened of heart. We can be shown things again and again, but somehow we just don't get it. Somehow we just don't see. We can sometimes be led to the water to drink, but we're often too distracted by other things and we wander elsewhere instead. We allow our hearts to become hardened to all the pain and suffering around us, hardened to the pain and suffering that we ourselves cause, intentionally or simply by our own silence. Therefore we come before God and confess our sins, our sins which we have committed, and our sins caused by doing nothing. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we continue in sorrow to confess our sins and our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal you and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. As Jesus has risen to be seated at the right hand of the Father, let us together praise the living God. Yeah. 
infla de estas tiso. Pour over me your waves of love. Pour over me. I see the King of Glory Coming on the clouds with fire The whole earth shakes The whole earth shakes I see His love and mercy Washing over all our sins Hosanna, 
Let us pray. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. The first reading is taken from Ezekiel, chapter 36, starting at verse 24. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I will give you for your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from John's first letter, chapter five. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his son. Those who believe in the son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading comes from John's Gospel, chapter 17, beginning to read at verse 6. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours all mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them and now I am no longer in the world but they are in the world and I am coming to you holy father protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one while I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. 
they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Although my dad didn't always manage to achieve it himself when it came to him and his uncle trying out my train set, my parents were nevertheless always very clear with me that any presents I was fortunate to receive were mine to play with, but also always needed to be shared with others. It's through sharing and playing nicely together that good friendships are formed, and we learn the benefit of each other's company and fellowship. The toy is merely an object, but the spirit it invokes during play enables young hearts and minds to travel the world, or allegedly, in the case of Buzz Lightyear, to infinity and beyond. Imagine, therefore, how incredible it felt to be told by the prophet Ezekiel that God is about to re-establish you as an entire nation. Despite all their past sins and wrongdoings, God is sticking to his promise of a fresh start, cleansing and rejuvenating his people with a new heart and spirit. What an incredible gift. What an awesome God. And as we hear the words of the prophet, we can only hope and pray that the people will be obedient to their charge to follow God's statutes and observe his ordinances. These include clear instructions about how the people of God should behave to others. We can take Leviticus chapter 19 verse 33 as an example. When an alien lives with you in your land, do not ill-treat him. The alien living with you must be treated as one of your native born. Love him as yourself, for you were aliens in Egypt. Fast forward now to May 2021. Jerusalem. The Guardian newspaper reports, anger had been mounting for weeks among Palestinians around an Israeli court case on whether Israeli authorities are able to evict dozens of Palestinians from a majority Arab Jerusalem neighborhood and give their homes to Jewish settlers. And so, inevitably, it all kicked off. Police forcing their way during Ramadan into the third most sacred precinct in the world for Islamic worship. Far-right Orthodox Jews staging a highly provocative march through sensitive areas of the city. Retaliatory rocket attacks by Hamas from the Gaza Strip into Israel. And massive airstrikes by the Israeli Air Force in response, in the usual frenzy of mutual violence, murder and destruction. The churches in Jerusalem were unusually united in their responses. In a joint statement, the 13 patriarchs and heads of churches said that the events over recent days violated the sanctity of Jerusalem as a holy city, undermining the safety of worshippers. Their spokesperson commented, for too long, hateful ideologies have been allowed to go unchecked. And the result is what we are witnessing in Jerusalem frequent attacks on holy sites, threats and intimidation of worshippers, and mob behaviour in the city streets reflect alarming intolerance towards other religious communities. And so, far from sharing the precious gifts of life, love and being that our wonderful Lord has showered upon us all, we see people not only failing to share those gifts as God has instructed us to do, but instead plotting actively to steal the homes of their neighbours. Perhaps hearts of flesh have once again been replaced with hearts of stone. Faced with all these and many other atrocities across the world, our churches live on. Leaders of the church come to the end of their ministries and are replaced. 
just as Matthias replaced Judas Iscariot as one of the 12 apostles. The process of discernment of the will of the Holy Spirit was both collective and democratic. The two most suitable candidates were identified and shortlisted, and then lots were cast by the 120 or so gathered, the results of which led to Matthias's appointment. To this day, collective decisions by discussion followed by voting are still made by our PCCs. It is shared ministry in action as we respond respectfully to the privilege of having a place of gathering for worship and sacred spaces, a wonderful gift which we are only too happy to share with others. Our reading from St John's Gospel reminds us that our ministry and calling makes us a distinctive group of people. Jesus prays for us all to be protected because we have received his word and he knows that the powers and authorities of this world who are not obedient to God do not like that. Jesus proclaims that the world hates us because we no longer belong to it, to its greed, discrimination, wrongdoing and general nastiness, but we belong instead to God. This changes everything. Jesus has sanctified himself in order that we also may be sanctified in truth. And this means in turn that we should never be silent in the face of oppression, but willing to stand up, to name it and fight to face it down. This is never easy, but we remember today what Jesus declared in his final prayers for his disciples as we continue to this day with his work and witness. We fight on in peace. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Given what Andy has reflected upon, I'm going to use prayers of intercession from Christian Aid, which are specifically for the Middle East. These are prayers prepared by different people. God of peace, encourage those who seek to establish a fair and just peace in the Middle East. Bless their efforts as they work to end conflict. Lead those who engage in violence to put down their weapons and to live in peace with one another. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace and justice, rain down upon us. Rain down upon us your peace. God of peace and justice, let every heart be filled with peace. God of justice, bless those who work for peace through justice. Strengthen their resolve in the face of seemingly endless violence. 
Guide the leaders of the peoples of the Middle East to know your will and to support a just peace for all your children. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, lifting up the holy land for all humankind, breathe love and compassion into our prayers with a desire for nothing other than peace. Peace in our hearts, peace for all creation, and especially peace in the land that is called holy. God of hope, we lift up the city of Jerusalem, distracted and divided, yet still filled with promise as all the cities of the world. Come again into our cities, places of worship, upper rooms and Gethsemanes, that we may be given sight to recognise you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, even as we long to understand that which is often beyond our comprehension, we lay before you the hearts, minds and bodies of all those suffering from conflict in Palestine and Israel and from the ongoing occupation. Shower upon all the people of the Holy Land the spirit of justice and reconciliation. God of the nations, Give to all our people the blessings of well-being, freedom and harmony. And above all things, give us faith in you that we may be strengthened to care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. And so we come to the peace. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. I am 
strong Let the poor say I am rich Because of what the Lord has done for us And now let the weak say I am strong Let the poor say The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, holy, holy. in the highest Hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes Blessed is he who comes In the name of the Lord Most High In the name of the Lord Most High Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest We praise and bless you loving Father through Jesus Christ our Lord and as we obey his command send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son on the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with John and Mark and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Spirit, breathe on. 
Let us pray. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ gives the water of life, eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness, through him who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Our notices. As you may recall, when I arrived here at St John's, my contract was not a permanent one, but one that was time limited, namely for three years. And I'm now in my final year. When Richard and I arrived here, we planned on this being our home for many, many years to come. But that option is no longer available. We're no longer in a position to stay here. Now I want to make it clear that our decision to leave has nothing to do with this parish whom we both love dearly, or the belief that God has stopped working here, for great things are ahead of everybody at St John's, should you all step up and take on the responsibility now and not push things off to a future date. Therefore I'm really pleased to announce today that I have been appointed as the next Dean of Pastoral Studies at the College of the Resurrection, Murfield, West Yorkshire. I will start there on the 1st of September, and this means that my last Sunday here will be the 1st of August, and I'll be taking the annual leave that I'm owed before then. May I thank you for the privilege I've had in serving you as the pastor of St John's. Now, having said all of this, I haven't gone yet. So our final hymn for today is All Over the World. All over the world, the Spirit It said it would be all over the world. There's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All over his church, God's Spirit is moving. All over his church, as the prophet it said it would be all over his church there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea right here in this place the spirit is moving right here in this place as the prophet said it would be right in this place there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the lord and the waters cover the sea the god of peace who brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
of something amazing a moment when heaven touches earth here in our hearts lord we are waiting for something that's far beyond what we have seen or heard let us start the ascension let's begin the Oh, oh.